I do not want to comment. Je me suis donné toutes les réponses dont j'avais besoin. C'est la Fashion Week Ils se mettent sur le trottoir, les fashion What Hi Malika. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. This is a long overdue episode. Yes. We're really happy to have you. We've been, been talking a, about we've been it talking. for a long time. So it's nice to have you. Thanks. Uh, Hopefully you have a lot more things to say, a lot more experience to share. You've done some great things in the past few months, so we're Thanks. excited to know everything about it. Thanks. I'm here. I'm here to spill it all out. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Okay, well, we're going to start it like with everybody. Um, so can you tell us like where you grew up, a little bit about your childhood and stuff like that and yeah. your background, as we're sharing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I was born and raised in Milano. I grew up in uh, the suburbs of Milano. And uh, <clears throat> I was born and raised in Milano. I grew up in the, suburb of, in the suburbs of Milano. And I come from a mixed family, half Moroccan, half Italian. Just it's the like best you, mix. The best mix. <laughs> Sorry to say. <laughs> sure, sure. We got the best of both worlds. Exactly. The best a, kitchen a, in the world. It's a very spicy mix. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> very loud. <laughs> very loud, very talkative, you know, Definitely. funny. And um, yeah, I was born and raised there. Uh, even though everybody thinks of Milano as a fashion capital, I, I never really even went to the city center until I started modeling i never went to monte napoleone or things like this you know okay. like really i grew up in the suburbs <laughs> so people stay in the suburbs there's some people in paris too like when they go to paris yeah. you know from the suburb it's like a trip you yeah know? exactly like a school trip or something like that like they go to the museum or they yeah, have something very course. specific to do but then they come mm. back to where they live you yes know? so we went to uh, brera every year <laughs> <laughs> what is Brera? Brera is like where they expose the old art pieces and all the Leonardo and yeah. everything. Else. Oh, okay. I, I can do you a tour guide there if you okay. need, you know. <laughs> Next time. Next yes. time I'm in Milano. So yeah. you grew up in the suburbs. Did you have any like siblings, brother, or sister? I have a younger sister, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you're the oldest sister. I am. Okay. The wise, the wise one. model. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. The one you look up to. Mm. The one that breaks the path. And that's the okay, good one. That's good. That's yes. Good. So how how were you as a kid? Were you like a good good girl, like good student? <laughs> how was the school situation? <laughs> yeah, how was right. the school situation? Well, okay. Well, now I feel put on the spot. Allora, uh, I went through phases. Okay. <laughs> First, I was a good kid. Okay. Uh, I was a very cute kid. I was a Girl Scout. Actually, I kept being a Girl Scout until I was eleven. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, eighteen. Oh, wow. Um, so throughout my whole life. And um, I think that that was actually what saved me. Like you were going uh, into like the woods and stuff? Yeah. Hiking wow. and in the tents and making fire and wow. everything. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. I loved okay. it. Um, I feel like that, that's why you're really like being in nature. And definitely. And, everything definitely. Still, right? and I think it's very necessary if you grow up in a city, you know, yes. yeah. to, to get out and, you know, to... Get the natural feeling. You know? Yeah, exactly. 100%. Um, and that also made me quite uh, responsible for myself at a young age because I had I had no mom, you know, when I was cold in the tent. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, then, well, in school, I've never really been very good. I, I've never been good at... Uh, Welcome to my team. At, <laughs> yes. <laughs> at studying for hours and hours. I've, I've always been more of a creative kid and more of a... You know, very Italian and very Moroccan, and also, you know, I didn't like uh, to system. have teachers telling me what to do. The and, authority. Uh, I didn't like the authority. I never really did. <coughs> But, um, and that's why, you know, um, I was considered kind of a hard, hard person to, to 
teach too. Mm-hmm. Oh, you like mean I like was... the teachers say, oh, the Malika, she's tough or stuff like no, that? No, they're like, uh, they would be like, Malika, she's very smart, but uh, she doesn't care about school. And I would be mm. like, yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> you're not really making me care about it so much. Mm. Uh, and also I was always outside making problems with the guys. You know, I was a bit of a tomboy. Um, I never really had boyfriends in high school, you know. I was always friend with the guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, like the tomboy girl. Yeah, I can, uh, I can picture like the tomboy girl. That. Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Then I have to say that growing up, I embraced more my feminine side. And also, I have to say that um, that probably also came when I fell in love and I felt embraced by who I am. And then I felt comfortable at... Um, letting also that side of me come out, you know, so mm-hmm. I didn't have to constantly protect myself because that's what I knew before uh, the environment, but from the environment, from, from everybody, you know, like where you grew up, you mean like where the I envi- grew up. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Even though, you know, my family has always been very n- nice and very mm. welcoming and open. Um, as soon as you step outside of the house, you know, you, you have to be a bit tough. Um, so I think that's also what, um, allowed me not to take things too personally, uh, now in my, in fashion industry, because I definitely received the no's before Mm -hmm. and I definitely, um, knew what it was to be tough, like tough environment. Yeah. And I know that, you know, I've... I've survived a lot of things before mm. uh, becoming a model. So I know that being a model is not what defines me as a person. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's, that's why maybe I, 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 I deal okay with nodes. Yeah. yeah. But what do you mean by that? What are those experiences that you mentioned? I mean, simply by being a woman in the world. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Simply by, you know, having to to go to school every day in the subway since you are uh, 10 years old and, uh, you know, having to deal with the older people, having to deal with men, having to deal with the, um, yeah. Yeah, so you've, you've built character. Yes. Mm, okay. It's crazy, you know, as a man, when I hear those stories, you know, and I say, okay, if I have, if I have a girl and stuff, you know, I hear so many stories, it's so, so tough. You know, to be yeah. a woman, I like just just living. You know, yeah. us we just go out, man. It's yeah. easy. Yeah. You know, you don't <laughs> yeah. have to you know think about your surroundings or yeah. anything. You just live your life. You know. Yeah. 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 Yesterday, I saw a video like that. It was just a guy filming filming himself. He was just walking in the street, and he was like, "Hey, look, girls, something you can never do." <laughs> and he was just walking in the street at night. Yeah, exactly. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like r- r- going running in the park or just walking well, back home. No from yeah i remember you posted something i think on instagram where you were running like in your neighborhood where you live now yeah. which is very quiet and stuff yeah. to say i could never do that like in other exactly. places at night no, running exactly. by myself i've never done it before you know mm. um yeah okay so did you graduate <laughs> <laughs> he's going back to school yeah we're going back oh, to school oh wow you didn't i didn't don't worry I, no no but i don't worry don't worry <laughs> 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 i did not graduate i started university Um, I started studying political science. It was actually called globalization science, which was a mix of anthropology, sociology, law, history, politics. Oh. It was very interesting. interesting yeah. It's what I was the most interested when I was 17, 18, and I had to choose school um, because I thought that I could change the world. Um, That's nice. And, uh, but then I started working, I started modeling, and uh, I tried to do one year both. That didn't work for neither of them. I yeah. wouldn't pass the exams. I wouldn't uh, say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't accept jobs because I had to study. And then at some point I was like, I have to choose, choose one of the mm. two when I choose modeling because this is now or never, you know? Yeah, of course. So how did you get scouted? Like... I didn't really get scouted. Um, It was years that they were stopping me on the street mm-hmm. uh, in Milano, um, but I didn't want to be a model. Um, <laughs> What were you saying? Were they coming back? I thought yeah. I thought that they were were trying to scam me. You know, I thought. Uh, yeah, I mean, and probably some of them, them were. You know, because <laughs> no, no, really. 
And when they start asking you for money for becoming a model, yeah, uh, yeah they do. Yeah, they yeah, they do. do. I had an interview about that like uh, yeah. a couple of months ago. Like even in France now, they're doing this. You know, oh, you five hundred euros, like, four thousand no, 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 euros, no, no, something. No, like, yeah, no, yeah. They asked me once was like, you you have a great potential. Uh, if you pay us 5,000 yeah, euros, 4,000, 5,000, yes, that's <laughs> we'll what teach I you do. how to, to walk yeah. and um, that's make a big a scam. Book. We'll so people will listen star. to this? Yeah, but like, the, the, don't you know, fall for, the, for this. Absolutely. The moment they ask you for money, you gotta run the other yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> also, I didn't have money for that, so <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of easy. <laughs> um, and then uh, when I started studying in university, I really needed a job, so I was like, let's give it a try. And uh, I knew I we had a family friend that was working in a magazine. And uh, for my 18th birthday, my mom decided to gift me um, a book, uh, okay. like uh, Pictures. Phot photo shoot. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I went there, didn't really know how all this works. I just mm -hmm. walk into the magazine um, office and they have a black uh, drop. Yeah. Um, and... And so they started snapping a couple of pictures and I saw that everybody f instantly fell in love and was in awe with me. And I was like, wow, oh my God, maybe I can do it actually. And they suggested me someone to go meet, a casting director to go meet in Milano um, that uh, took my case very... Um, um, like seriously? Seriously. And uh, he decided to fly with me the week after to Paris to go meet my um, current agency, Viva. Viva. Yeah. And oh. uh, since that's, it started, you know, I've never even been to Paris before. I've never... Oh, it I, was the first time when you yeah, came? Yeah, okay. it was the first time I left. I've only been to Italy and Morocco before that. Mm -hmm. so it was the first time I've Good ever, travel. you know... And you were like, eight, you were 18, right? I 18, was 18. 19? 18, yeah. yeah. Okay, so how did you go, like, coming to this office and meeting people, like, from an industry that, from what you were saying, you have no idea what's happening, right? Yeah. Well, um, so at the beginning, I was a bit resistant um, because uh, they were asking me all these things that I thought were crazy, like my measurements mm. and to change my diet mm. and to... <laughs> for the Italian market. No, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> my pizza, my pasta. <laughs> um, they wanted to take uh, polas and bikini polas, and I thought I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. like chill, you know, like <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know you. Uh, then I figured that that's just how it goes, and that's just normal. Um, they they want to 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 know you, um, and. Um, and uh, so I started this um, with a sort of lightness because that was never... It was never a career for you, That right? was never my biggest dream in life at the beginning, you know? Mm. So, and I think that that's what allowed me to just take it easier. And um, so... I, I started like this. I did one year um, going back and forth with school and everything. And then um, then when I decided to stop school, I was like, okay, now I'm stopping university. So I need to really focus on this job. Yeah. It's not a game. Yeah. It's a job. And so you took it like seriously yes. from that point? Like yes. I'm going to make it like a career or like professional thing? Yes, because... Uh, <coughs> I, the people I meet in in this industry, they also take it very seriously and they also work a lot. Mm. So for me not to take it seriously would be a big disrespect. And, um, you know, if there is one thing that my parents taught me is uh, to to work hard. Um, so I've I've always been like this, you know, except for school. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's another story. I really, I really put, I really started working and, you know, focusing on it and training harder and eating healthier and stop smoking and stop drinking. You know what I mean? Like just, just. 
yeah, doing 100%. it a hundred percent because it's not yeah. a job. It's not like only on set, you know, it's yeah, a, it's a 24 hour job. Yeah, of course. Uh, it's about the decisions you make. It's about the people you meet. It's about uh, how you talk to people and how you behave mm-hmm. on set exactly. and uh, outside of the set. So what was your first job? You remember um, your first editorial or your first yes, job? Yes. So I, I started pretty well because I remember my first, first editorial was uh, British Vogue and um, it wasn't single. It was with other girls, mm-hmm. um, but I was obviously the new face, you know, yeah. uh, <laughs> and uh, it, it, it felt crazy. Then um, I did Pop Magazine um, as a single story. Uh, I mean, yeah, single story. And um, which <laughs> which was also crazy because I remember that they put me this sort of... They, they wanted to make um, a fur look with the, with the naked uh, legs, but they didn't really have underwear for that type of look Mm. so they created underwear like wrapping (laughs) something uh it turned out very well you know but for me not not for me i'm like where am i you know like uh, what am i even doing (laughs) it was (laughs) makes you consider like (laughs) am i the right place yeah Yeah. it's a lot it's a lot when you come from completely different world it's the first time especially because um you know my parents have always supported me, but obviously if you don't know what being a model is like, especially I think from an Arab country, mm-hmm. uh, there is this misconception that uh, it's, uh, you know, almost pornographic. Yeah. Uh, well, and, you know, I, I'll tell you something, even in France, you know, people like people that I know that are not in the fashion industry or older yeah. people, my parents age or thing. When you tell them models for them, it's like almost pornographic. You yeah, know? That's exactly. The, that's how they see it yeah Yeah, they see the lingerie shoot and Mm. everything so i remember my dad at the beginning was like you do it but i never want to see you in lingerie (laughs) i was like okay dad and then you did the eight time show (laughs) (laughs) i've been i've been been very good for years and then i was like dad look i now i can tell what's a good job and what's not a good job and you know it's not like they're forcing me to to do lingerie so you know, and it's always uh, something very like controlled, and the image is great. And, and also, I work out so much; I need to uh, to show <laughs> it. <laughs> it. <laughs> show it. It's true. She's she's a worker. Okay, so that's, that's editorial, true. and after like you remember your first job with clients, and like how you felt before going into it. Well, it started getting easier after because um, when you, I I remember I did the. Um, Actually, I remember on my 19th birthday, so it's uh, less than a year in, I did this Zara shooting okay. and um, it was in Tenerife. And I remember flying there, not even seeing anything about mm. it. We shot in front of a white wall <laughs> and flew back. But anyway, I was... Uh, I was it's like a- when people tell you, oh, you've been traveling. Yeah, yeah exactly. I've seen walls. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um and uh, for me, before going there, I was crying so much because I wanted to celebrate my uh, birthday with my friends and with my boyfriend at the time. And, you know, I felt like I didn't, you know, I just didn't want to do it that exact day. Um, but then I arrived there. They had a cake on set and there, oh. there was this girl that has been so nice to me. And we ended up, you know, chilling at the... Um, at the hotel yeah. and actually having a midnight swim at the hotel pool like oh, i had nice. i had a really nice birthday at the end and that's when i actually felt embraced and i felt like there's good size sides course, to the industries there, there is good people you know you, you can make friends of course but in in the meantime like where you were growing up in the business the industry how was your talk with your agents and the people from like they, were they helping you? Were you learning by yourself, or how did you feel about like com- like the comprehension of like this industry? Well, um, obviously, a lot of things you need to learn by yourself. The fashion terminology—it's mm-hmm. um, not something that you just are <laughs> born with it. Yeah, and um, and also to figure out 
how to deal with different people and you know when they're like there is this big photographer on set big stylist on set so you just need to do a bit of research you know before and um uh they've always my agency has always been very good to me and very understanding and very um, yeah they're known for that for talking to the girls yeah and they've trying always to been they're helpful. yeah always been helpful i have to say like times i felt um a bit unsafe maybe or they they came on set you know i remember this time i was shooting with the photographer i felt a very weird vibe from my agent came on set and she was just working on the computer on set you know I'm with you yeah that's great and, yeah. that's protective that's that's that's, that's good. nice yeah. Yeah, it's nice to feel supported and i i feel like i'm blessed uh i started this job um after 18 because bef- mm. some girls start way too young you know and yeah. they don't know what's good and what's bad what's normal and what's not and you know it's very easy to say yes to everything but you don't you don't have to you know you're a person you have your integrity and your morals so you should be able to say no. Mm. Yeah, but it's how when you're younger, sometimes you're more intimidated, you know, because you don't have the self-confidence of being like, and, and no, es- I'm not doing that. And especially if uh, if being a model has always been your biggest dream, you'll do anything yeah. to get there. That's true. Know? That's why they use it. They use it against you. Yeah. Mm. Like, I remember uh, at, when you start, they, they bring you to do these test shoots with the random photographers a bit yeah. around um and i remember this one photographer um that uh, wanted me to do it uh with lingerie um and i was i was i was like i'm you know okay. can we just mm. not do it with lingerie mm. i promise my dad <laughs> <laughs> that's the best excuse yeah um <clears throat> and uh and he started saying things like, if you're not comfortable with your body, you will never be a big model. You need to, you need to understand when it's time for you to, to do your job and things like this, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, I just walked out because I was like, who are you? Like, okay. I don't even know you. Like, I'm, I'm, this is not even a job. I did, I did my research. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I did my research. Like someone, some like, friend wh- of mine says, according to models.com, you doesn't, you're not, <laughs> don't you don't exist. You don't exist. <laughs> that's yeah. mean. No, that's mean, yeah. <laughs> He's a mean person. You know what I'm talking about. I don't want to know. <laughs> No, but it is good that it's good indeed that you were like old enough to stand up for yourself and you had, you know, had, as you said, your morals and everything. I think that's yeah. really important as well. Um, and so your parents were okay with you leaving school and focusing on model hundred, modeling and 100%. They I mean, didn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I mean, uh, they, they knew that I w- was never the greatest student. Mm-hmm. So, and... They they just trusted me, you know. They they weren't happy, but uh, they they've always been supportive. Yeah. I mean, if if at some point this would have started harming me or or it started going bad, I think that they would have stepped up. But they've always let me do my things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. So yeah. so you had this year to experiment and have like your studies and then also modeling on the side. And then when you started doing it full time, did you see like an evolution? Was there like a specific job that made you want to really focus on it? Or what was the process? No, I, I just at some point I just changed my mindset and I was like, I am I this is the only thing I'm doing right now. So I need to be doing it right. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, there is no point. Like yeah. the purpose um, was. The purpose was to learn to do it very well because um because i know i i can you know i know i can do it very well so let's just put the work in and do it very well and i am actually i'm very proud of myself for 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 doing that for me you know because i i could have also been sluggish and not really taking care of of that part and of my business but yeah, I'm, a the right I'm a businesswoman. I'm a businesswoman. Okay, that. so after that, like, it started accelerating for you, like your career. You start doing show, major things. You had an ID story, if I remember right now. 
Oh, Days? No, no. Days. Oh, Days. No, no, I, I had the Days story. My first, um, my first uh, seasons were amazing. I was mm. doing every show. I was running. Uh, you know, I was, I was, I did all the fashion weeks, and I was doing three, four shows a day. How did you feel about that? Like, because that's a big change. That's a big change of like the way of your. It do. was crazy. I thought, I thought it was crazy when you land from New York to London and you have to go directly into a show like without even sleeping because I, I, I was obviously flying economy, so I couldn't <laughs> sleep going, <laughs> going to London. <laughs> And you have to go directly to a show. I was like, oh my God, this, this life is crazy. How can a human do this? But then uh, when you start doing a bit less shows, you miss the rush, you know? Oh, really? Yeah. I, 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 I like the rush, you know? I like to, I like to do it. It's um, very intense. I, I, it's very intense, but I love Fashion Week because all your friends are there and... Uh, you meet very interesting people and yeah um i mean shows are a very funny concept because you spend three so four hours time. there for your 30 seconds of glory yeah mm. um that are glory only if you're opening or closing most of the time no. you know no i'm Come joking on. <laughs> <laughs> look at her <laughs> i'm joking but um but at the beginning, I was so nervous. I was... Oh my God. The first show I did was Alberta Ferretti in Milano. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was going to die on the catwalk. Like, <laughs> I, I, I seriously thought I was going to pass out. Uh, on the lineup, I had the Bella did in front of me, and I don't remember, someone else behind me. And I was like, oh my God, this is... Where am I? This is insane. Um, and then you go out... They don't really tell you where to look in the camera. They don't really ex explain you much. You know, you you try the you try the the catwalk. Yeah, the rehearsal. You do the rehearsal, and then you're there. And it was the first time that all these people were looking at me walking. You know, mm. um, it's a lot of pressure, and it's also like it's a one-time thing. You go and you come back, and that's and it. that's it. Yeah. You know, sometimes I see. You know, when because there's runway where I was straight, but there are way when you go left right and yeah, you so see, crazy. So, i always think about those girls like go the wrong direction yeah, it and, happened like, it yeah. happens it yeah. happened to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm not gonna tell but because then people are gonna go watch where but um but it happens to the best of us yeah i remember it, it's a big girl okay. like a closing girl <clears throat> like she did the wrong way and when the show was finished like they made her go like the the right way at the end by yourself. Oh my god! Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Moment like, of loneliness. Yeah, very loneliness. And the girls like tripping too. Like. Yeah, because you, you you arrive there four hours before. They you spend all the time getting ready. Mm. Then they show you the catwalk. Yeah. One time. It's only once, right? Mm. Yeah. They show you the catwalk one time. If you're if you're lucky, it's easy. If you're mm. not lucky, it's not easy. You have to go up and down, left and right, and mm. then you have to remember. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so you connected with the other girls from the industry, like you met some friends during Fashion Week. That's where you built your. Yeah, uh, yeah of course. Um, I think I started in uh, in 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 a very good year, um, because uh, a, a lot of nice girls started when I started, and it was really great to see them show after show. Uh, do, going through the same struggles and you know um, facing them together is this something that you talk it. with like when you your girls are between like when you are together you talk about your experience like yeah of course I mean of course we we suggest each other what to do and we um, yeah we just go through it it's it's, it's a learning process for everybody we, we've never done it before you know so how do you think? How are you doing this walk? Uh, uh, how are you doing with these shoes? Because they're crazy. <laughs> um, uh, do you like the makeup? How are you, you know, how are you going to go to this other show that it's in half an hour? <laughs> <laughs> Things like this, just the logistics. But then also, you know, the 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 mental part of it. Yeah. What about um, the mental health? Yeah, yeah, the mental health is, uh, it's a big uh, part of it especially during fashion week because 
you go to a thousand castings and they just look at you up and down and then they're like, when all right, look. bye. That's when they look. <laughs> That's the truth. Um, it's a lot of judgment. Like, it's a lot of, like, you don't, if you have rejection issues, it's, like, exactly. complicated. It's no, hard to deal with. You're not really considered uh, in, in some castings, you know. They, they, if you're not their type that they're looking for, they because they're also in a rush you know exactly i was about to say they're also in a rush and i understand they have their type that they're looking for um but i'm also a person and i am i'm a sensitive person so when when people don't acknowledge me it it hurts a bit you know but then you know it happens to all the girls yeah of course so of course. you just gotta learn from it and that's why i say that being a model is not for every beautiful girl because you need to you need to stand for yourself and you need to be able to accept the nose and you need to be able to go through the nose and and you know learn from them and be like okay they didn't like my walk i'm gonna learn and show them next season i got better you know um mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like a sports mentality, kind of. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, yes and no, because sports is something very rational. Like, you know, like a good, a good, I don't know. I don't know anything about sports, but if you like play basketball, a good shoot is a right. good shoot. Yeah. A good walk is very subjective. I yeah. might like your walk. He might not like it. Right. So how do you make it better if you don't know what they want exactly? Mm. Yeah, yeah, and I, w I was talking more about like the mindset of always fighting, you know, and like always pushing yourself harder, you know. Because if you get me, I don't know if I get so many rejection, I don't know if I have it in me to say, okay, fuck it, I'm going to prove you. I you think know? you do. I yeah, I think, I think you, do. you do, but I don't think everybody does. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I, it's also something you learn. I don't think I had it before, you know. Yeah, it's something you learn. It's it's the only way to survive, and especially also after during COVID years, a lot of girls that didn't push through, uh, you know, all of a sudden you, you started seeing less and less, mm -hmm. seeing them less and less. Uh, so that that was also a time where you have to reinvent yourself and re yeah, readapt and. It was a funny era with the Zoom shootings and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <fuck>. yeah, we, <laughs> it's we like it never happened. Yeah. No, but yeah, I remember that they would be like, oh, can you shoot yourself in your room? Like, we'll send you like the clothes. Yeah, and can and that's what I was in the doing. Background. It's, it was so fun. You did a few of them. Yeah, I was doing that. It was really funny. They were they would send... The, and then the stylist is on the Zoom and yeah, they're like... They would send this two trucks in the morning, one full of clothes and one full of uh, um, couches and armchairs and tables. No way. So oh, they were design. sending also props. Yes, yes so I would I would restyle my house as if I was in different <laughs> places, and then at 6 p.m. they would come, pack everything up, and leave. <laughs> Can I keep that cat? <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is designer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it was crazy. Yeah, and it was the time I like. Oh, we're not gonna do shows anymore. Everybody's everything's gonna be video and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. The moment we're back, we're back. Yeah, but it's it's interesting what you're saying about, you know, having to reinvent yourself. How do you think you stay relevant? By having something to say and, you know, by being truth to yourself yeah. and by being honest with yourself as well. Um, transformation is good. Yeah. Transformation oh, yeah. Is, is necessary. It's part of life. Yeah, it's you don't want to stay life. the same that you were when you were 16. No, or... exactly. No, no, of course. But yeah. it's true that like this industry, they love like the young girls, the stuff, you know, they get this kind of fascination with new faces, you know. So there's so many girls that start like maybe that have started the same season as you that are not doing it anymore. There's very few girls like you that are still relevant to doing the big things, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's very, when you look at it from the outside, you're like, maybe I get one chance out of like thousands and thousands. Yeah, it's the Hunger Games, really. Yeah, it's the <laughs> Hunger Games. Then you also meet good people that fight for you, you know. But Yeah, you build relationships, You right? build relationships, but uh, when you don't, it's really up to you. And uh, it's my Moroccan blood, I think. <laughs> <laughs> A fighter. Okay, and uh, we're going to talk a, a little bit about like the industry and uh, and also you being who you are, um, which is different from, you know, everybody's got this ethnic background and stuff like that. But um, 
us with our background we've we've seen that there's a very lack of representation of arabic people in the industry yes and uh, we wanted to know like how did you feel like did you feel sometimes that things happen that you were rejected because of your who you are or stuff that you didn't get so let's start from the fact that i grew up i am mixed i'm not mm. fully arab yeah so being mixed means that you're both not yeah. that you're half and half yeah. yeah i am italian and i am moroccan growing up in italy um i felt like i had to um i i had to be more italian than moroccan like i was i was um i was trying to melt with the with the culture and with the mm. other girls around me um and i i didn't really consider myself so much of an arab you know i thought I thought yes I'm 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 half Moroccan but but I am Italian like I, I you know But uh, Italian is a strong identity also Also yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though already back then you know people were making me notice that I'm not <laughs> Italian <laughs> Yeah because you have um yeah you're like I'm I'm talking in Italian with a very Milanese accent and they're mm. like, but where are you from? And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm from here. I was born here. And like, but where are you from really? Mm. Mm -hmm. like, I can't tell you a funny story. Sorry, I can't, but I get, it's the it's story reminds me of something. Like one time I was in Morocco with my family, like to a wedding, my cousin wedding, mm. you know, and I only knew Arabic people like from France and from Morocco, from my family, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and we were on the couch, you know, on the men's part. And like one relative started talking in Italian because he was a Moroccan living in Italy. And I remember looking at my dad. I was like, <laughs> what, what is, is going on? Is that possible? Because for me as a kid, I was like, oh, he can only speak either Arabic or oh, French. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, there's a lot of Moroccans go, go, go back and forth and mm. Arab in general. Um, so, so that was that. And... Uh, then I started modeling and all of a sudden all this side of me is brought up. And they're like, wow, you're, you're Moroccan, you're Arabic. And I'm like, yeah, I am. But I never thought it was a thing, you know, I, where, where I grew up, it, yes, there were Moroccans, but like the school I grew, went to, there were no other Moroccans, you know, so, or Arab. Okay. So it was like Italians or some, you know, African people, um, Asians, but no Moroccans. So I was always trying to figure out where I belong. And I always knew that I weren't belonging anywhere mm -hmm. there. Um, so all of a sudden, uh, they start asking me about my background in a different side, in a different way. And I'm like, wait a minute. Yes, I am Moroccan. And big part of who I am and my values and you know the way I think it's also because I am Moroccan um, and Italian um, so I started embracing that side of me even more and actually also researching more and getting deeper connection with my with my family um, because it's not so much celebrated in Italy you know it's it's not the easiest country to be Moroccan Um, so, um, I felt that was very empowering and, um, what I also felt very interesting is the moment you are not Western and so you're Moroccan for me or from another country, um, they expect you to be a pioneer. They expect you to represent your people and, you know, yeah. have something to say for your people, which yeah. in my case was true because I've, I've always been interested in it and, you know, I'll do it gladly. I love my people, but I also find it harsh for some girls that are just 18, 19 and all of a sudden yeah. they're like, so they're asking, they're asking yeah. them about these big issues and they're like, I'm just a kid. I don't know. Why do I yeah. have to be? You haven't yeah. even figured out yourself who you yeah. are, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also they don't know your story. Like it could have been that your dad, I don't know, left or never talked about Morocco, exactly. never brought you back, that you just felt Italian with Moroccan background, but like nothing to say about, yeah, about exactly. this, you know? So yeah, yeah, I understand. Do you think that coming to Paris and working in Paris, because you just said 
in Italy it's not as celebrated. I feel yeah. like maybe in France we have this Absolutely. advantage that the um, immigration is so huge from Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco and everything that it's a bit more accepted and you have this sense of like community, especially here in Paris. Yes, absolutely. Um, there's much more Arab people that I meet uh, in the industry, at least, yeah. in Paris than in Milano. Um, I mean, immigration is also big in Italy, but it's, it's just... It's just difficult. Uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's difficult in French too, but like... I mean, like, like you were saying, the countries that used to be like colonies or protectaria or stuff like that, mm -hmm. it's, it's deeper, you know, the, For sure. the connection between those countries are, are much deeper. I think that yeah, Italy think. wasn't like colonizing, I, yeah. I think maybe part of Tunisia, but like, not like the French did or like mm -hmm. taking like full villages to build back yeah, <laughs> the cities and stuff. There's a, crazy. Strong, there's a strong connection. It's, it's, I'm saying especially here in Paris because there's a lot of immigration here. But in the of France too, come on. Hey, hey come on. <laughs> Marseille. Uh, what All the ports. Marseille? Hey, we come I from know. the ports. No, but in, in, in fashion, definitely more in, in Paris than yeah. in other countries. I the, There is a big Arabic community, like, uh, I mean, no models, but, mm. you know, there's quite a few Arab people that work in the industry, many more than... Yeah, yeah, in other places. Mm -hmm. So it made you embrace more about like this part of your origin. That was a good side. So the fashion elevated you, you know, in a way. It just pointed it out. It mm. just put a spotlight on it. Yeah. Okay. You don't, you don't so really I, a... I, you know, I, I did the work, <laughs> and I was like, okay, wow, actually, you know, it's true. I am this. <laughs> I have this baggage. Let me open yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay. Um, but that was a blessing because um, I got to know myself better in that way. Yeah. <clears throat> but it also probably made it sometimes more difficult for you. Did you feel like you missed on opportunities because of that also? Um, I think, um, you know, I think I'm put in this macro group of mixed girls mm. that like Iman was like yes. was put like, like people thought that she was mixed black or something yeah. Else. Yeah. like I am you know I am in the same category let's say mm. of someone that it's from India or someone mm. that it's uh, uh, Latina from mm. uh, f you know it's just mm -hmm. the same skin color <laughs> you know so <laughs> I mean in that sense they, they always kind of need uh, yeah. the, I mean Yeah, yeah. They always love to check the boxes. Yeah, you know, of course. So it's part of the marketing thing. Like we need that type of skin, that type of girl. But yeah. I make sure that when I get on set, they they know Respect. that I'm that I'm half Italian, half Moroccan, and I'm from any other country. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's different. We're different people, different cultures, <laughs> <course>. like <laughs> different DNA. You know, well, of course. <laughs> yes, for sure. So yeah, you, so you don't feel like this has been setting you back in any way. I I I wouldn't say so because um I wouldn't say so because I am very good at my job. So that's what counts at the end. True. Um obviously, you know, obviously the path is easier for other girls than me. Yeah. Um I mean, we cannot deny it. Um also for girls that already had contacts in the industry or were born in it mm -hmm. or, you know, um, but, uh, I, I always wanted to let the talent speak and, uh, you know, the hard work speak. And I think that's the best way. I mean, yeah. I don't want to beat myself up saying, you know, I, no, of course. you know, no, no, but it's interesting sometimes, especially when, you know, you've had the success that you had, And you're aware of the work that you had to put in to be like, okay, maybe I had to work a little bit harder, though. Yeah, well, I'm nowhere yet, you know. I have so much more to achieve. Oh. That, uh, <laughs> okay, come on, okay, so if you're at that point, okay, I want you to talk about, like, this amazing Vogue France cover. Yeah, That's a big, it. big yeah, thing. Yeah, thank so you. We're so proud. Yeah, thank congrats. You. Congrats. <laughs> Thanks. But you remember getting the option, like yeah, where it did it come from? How did it go? It was very casual. It was yeah? you have uh, you have <laughs> this uh, Vogue France option, 
but you know it was supposed it was a story with other girls yeah, yeah i know and they weren't sure if it was gonna go on the cover you know so i was like I was talking to myself in the mirror before going there. I was like, Malika, you know, it's not a big deal. It's just, you know, an editorial. <laughs> <laughs> then I went there and I met the beautiful creatives I was working with, uh, Malik Bodian and mm -hmm. uh, Ib Kamara. And we had such a good connection. And um, I feel like they really understood me um, and they saw me mm. uh, that... Uh, it was it was a surprise, you know. Nobody told me that it was gonna end on the cover. I just at some oh, point really? I just saw it. Yeah. No, I, I remember like on. someone sent it to me because I work on, on the issue. Yeah, and like I didn't want to send it to you. I said, okay, I'm gonna give her. Hey. The, she's gonna get the surprise. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. Well, you really had the surprise for real. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. I mean, I I remember uh, someone texted me and was like, you know, we're we're trying to make it work. And I was like, still trying not to put all my hopes up, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah because um, there are so many stories of girl who was supposed to be on the cover and, and like on the like, very oh, last exactly. minute. Exactly. And then the the <clears throat> day came out. I I think I was here in Paris and I think I bought something like. 15 copies i went around <laughs> oh. distributing it to everybody to the hotel i was staying to the this is me. yeah i was like uh, <laughs> look went to me. the agency it was me. like put it frame it please you know <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. a, that's a big thing yeah yeah like how, how your parents reacted to it because oh no like even if i know my parents they don't know nothing about fashion but like a vogue cover that everybody they will understand. knows yeah. everybody knows well they they were so happy they were extremely happy I mean, I think the, the they reacted more crazy with my first Vogue cover, which was the Arab um, yeah. uh, Vogue yeah. Arabia, because I was younger and it was mm. the first cover. Uh, but uh, th this one, I was like, "Mom, this is uh, the best. Uh, mm. You know, this is the best, <laughs> <laughs> the, the finest." <laughs> and uh, she also bought a lot of uh, copies of that she <laughs> distributed. I around. heard it's the most sold <laughs> <laughs> copies yeah, ever. I was like, "Let's make it work." <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god. My congrats. Okay, it's yeah. amazing Thank for you. you. Thank no, you so really much. Happy. Yeah, you know, after I've been working for five years now, you know, it, it takes it, it's a long time it, for a model. It people takes, don't realize, yes. but it's a long time. It takes a lot of work to make people see you. Thank True. you. Thank you for yeah. saying that. It's yeah. important. It's important. Of it's course. Important. Oh my god. Yeah. Do you um What what is what do you think is coming next week? What are your plans? Because you said I have a big dream. Oh, you, you need to put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> Manifest it. No, I mean I I still think I need to achieve a lot in the industry. I there's still campaigns and you know ad, more covers and more co contracts and more mm. uh, campaigns that I want to do. Um, yeah. You're under contract, right? You you get a perfume? No. No. Oh, I thought you had a perfume. Okay. No, no, no. I've never had a contract, actually. Okay. Um, so there's still a lot that I want to achieve, but um, I'm also, you know, I would also want to be able to start to express myself and my art more and into different medium. Um, so, you know, I, I just to get to know myself, I would love to start doing acti acting classes and... Um, I've done already a couple and I thought that it really helped with modeling as well. Yes. Um, and, uh, so I would love to explore that way more. I, I'm I, right now I'm like, I'm, I'm really exploring different, different terrains and seeing what works best for me. So I don't want to put too much out because cool. nothing is really set yet. Of course. Uh, but, um, But yeah, I'm definitely. I definitely want to keep working. I definitely want to work uh, with Morocco more, also with the charity and everything. Um, I definitely want to, you know, just prove people that sometimes I work with amazing brands that I always dreamed of working with, um, and I do the Ramadan campaigns. <laughs> 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 I saw you when I was in Dubai. I saw you I like love it. You know, I'm, I was like, I'm oh, glad. Hi, I'm proud. I'm happy. I I I love both the brands and the Ramadan. But I am not just the, the face of Ramadan. <laughs> I'm I'm not just an Arab girl. You know, I am I'm. I'm I'm a good model. You know, I'm like I can I can do much more than that. Yeah. yeah. So people will see it for sure. You know. 
but you looked good over there on mm -hmm. the like huge billboard of course thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you you, you know i had something in mind you said in the beginning that you have a little sister right yeah. Do, does she want to do modeling does she look up to you for that or um i think uh she i th i think she has sometimes sometimes she wants to be a model but she sees the back side of the job mm. which is having no basically no, no social life mm. and uh, flying and being so tired all the time that i think that uh, set her a bit um, more yeah you know um away from it but she totally could she's tall she's beautiful um she she's she's sensitive though you know mm -hmm. so you know Yeah, it's not Maybe like you were saying, best. it's not for everybody. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, talking about traveling all the time and no social life, like yeah. now that you're older and you have like relationships and stuff, like how do you handle your day-to-day, -day, how you manage your life? You know, do you try to find balance or you're still like, okay, I'm going to get 100%? Uh, I have to find balance. Otherwise, uh, I, I wouldn't be here after all these years, you know. Mm. I, I, I make sure I... I make sure I have my time in nature. That's the thing that grounds me the most. Mm -hmm. um, I make sure... Uh, so as soon as I'm not working, I am. I, I run up a mountain. <laughs> I'm <laughs> hugging trees and everything. That's really, that's really the thing that saves me. Uh, then also training and sport also is very good for my mind. I do yoga, I meditate. Like I make sure that I take time for myself as well um because to recharge too like. to recharge and also you know when when you're on set and you're working i mean at least me i feel like i'm on charge on uh, of the energy of all these mm. 35 people that are looking at me mm. <laughs> so i take that very seriously you know i want to make sure that everybody's feeling good and that everybody's is happy at the end of the day and um And uh, so, so for that, you you have to have your energy level up. Yeah. You're um, bringing the vibes. I'm bringing the vibes. <laughs> that's for sure. Okay. I, I was actually going somewhere with my question about your sister. So do, your sister is one thing, but do you have younger girls looking up to you or like, you know, texting, not texting, but like DMing you? And yeah. So cute. Yeah. I have, uh, I have many young girls that uh, text me on Instagram and they're like, uh, maybe they send me pictures and they're like uh, i want to be a model how can i start um i suggest them sometimes what to do to just uh, reach out to agencies and send them pictures uh sometimes it's not easy because they're not in europe um and for that also it, it gets more complicated um sometimes um <laughs> But I always try to be to be kind of a guide and kind of a, you know, I just just the little tips that nobody tells you, you know. Yeah. What would be like three three things you would say to like a younger girl who would DM you and be like, oh, I want to be a model. How did you make it? Okay. Well, first of all, um, sometimes they text me really young. Sometimes they text <laughs> me like twelve, thirteen, fourteen, oh. and I'm like, girl finish school first Stay and then school. you know like finish at least get a diploma and then you know think about it after um then i tell them uh i just i just suggest them agencies that they can reach out to mm -hmm. and uh and i also tell them to make sure to keep their head up uh head on their shoulder you know because if <sighs> Because you'll meet a lot of people that will try to take advantage of you, and you know you 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 need to be tough, yeah, yeah. grounded and and uh, or like sometimes girls ask me, you know, I want to be a model, but my parents don't uh, want that um, because that's also an issue with Arab countries, you know, um, strict parents or just mis misinformation about fashion. Um, and I just suggest them to talk to them more and, you know, just show them my profile if, if, <laughs> <laughs> if they if don't believe helps. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, it's, it's not so easy. Um, and, uh, but we need more Arab girls, you know, so I always try to encourage them because uh, you never know, maybe one of them is the next star. 
Yeah. You know, 100%. Um, we definitely need more Arab girls and we need, um, we need the uh, we need agencies that scout there we need yeah. uh, you know yeah definitely definitely I couldn't agree more yeah. yeah i think that would be a good last word but do you have anything else you want to share is there anything that you want to talk <laughs> about that you had in mind <laughs> um well i feel like i shared the uh, i shared pretty much my story and i just want to make sure that people take this easy <laughs> i want to make sure you know this is this is an amazing business and an amazing opportunity that many people get but life is so much more than what this seems so you know take good care of you and take good care of of what you believe in and uh, your dreams um And, uh, you know, I'll make sure that you can dream it. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marika. Thanks, Marika. Thank Thanks you so much. much. Thanks.